Good morning. My name is Mitchell Warson. I'm your invigilator for the OET speaking test conducting on the 30th of January 2021. Can you say your name for the record, please? Good morning, Mitchell. My name is Hank Smith. And what is your candidate number, please? My candidate number is 21164223. Thank you. And you are taking this test as a nurse. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Thank you. Can I see your ID, please? Sure. Here it is. The warm-up questions are not assessed and are a chance for us to get used to each other's voices. We'll just talk for two to three minutes. All right. What would you do if a family member were unsatisfied with a patient's care? This happened to me within the past six months with a patient's son, and I immediately apologized to the concerned family member. Even though I had done nothing wrong, I still felt it was necessary to validate the person's feelings and let him know I was taking his feedback seriously. After listening carefully to his feedback, I assured him that top quality care is always my priority and empathized with the fact that he wanted his loved one to be well looked after. This conversation resulted in the family member admitting that he had misinterpreted things and saying he felt at ease about me caring for the patient. Have you ever had to deal with a distraught family member? How did you handle the situation? It is always very difficult for family members to see someone they love suffering, and I understand that firsthand. During my time at the urgent clinic, I dealt with several family members who came in with a patient who required immediate transfer via ambulance to the emergency department. In each of these cases, I spoke calmly, clearly, and honestly to the individual. I acknowledged the patient's condition and assured the family that the medical team would strive to provide the best possible care for their loved one. Describe your ability to handle high-pressure situations. I have always done well with deadlines and thrive in a fast-paced work environment. During my time at the urgent care clinic, I have helped numerous patients with illnesses, injuries, and health crises. One particular day a mother brought in her young child, who had been quite ill. During the intake process, the child became unresponsive, and I had to think quickly and act calmly. I immediately began checking the child's vital signs, sent the other front desk worker to get the doctor and began cardiopulmonary resuscitation, which I continued until a physician took over. The child was ultimately revived, and my ability to act quickly, using the training I had acquired, was an integral part of saving that child's life. How do you think a practice can achieve the best quality of care? I think that patient education is a big part of a successful practice. It's also important to constantly keep doctors, nurses, and other staff members updated in the latest research and news in the medical world. Making sure that all medical staff is aware of new recommendations can help improve patient outcomes. With pediatrics, it's vital to make sure patients feel relaxed and welcomed during examinations and procedures as well. What would you do if a parent refuses medical treatment or vaccinations for his or her child? In many of the practices I worked for, Parents who refuse necessary treatments or vaccinations are turned away from the practice. I feel that this is the best way of preventing spread of disease to those children who are most vulnerable, such as infants and pediatric cancer patients. Great. Thank you very much for sharing that. So, let's move on to the role plays now. I'll take the part of the patients or perhaps a relative and you'll take your professional role. The purpose of the role play is to get evidence of your ability to communicate effectively with patients. Use your ability to fulfill as much of the role play as possible. Do you have any questions? No. You have up to three minutes to prepare the role play. You will start the role play after that time. I'll let you know when three minutes are up. You can ask me if there is anything you are not sure about and you can make notes on the role play card if you want to. Here's a pencil for making notes. Thank you. You can now start the preparation.
Your preparation time is over. You can now start the role play. Don't worry if I stop the role play when the time is up. Hello, good morning. I'm Hank Smith, the head nurse at the hospital. How may I help you? Hello, I'm Mitchell Warson. I would like to have a discussion on my baby's diet. I'm glad to provide the information you are looking for. Thank you, nurse. Well, may I know how old your baby is? My baby is just two weeks old now. Mitchell, the diet of a two weeks old infant is usually on breastfeeding, and only in the case of unavailability of mother, or, mother's milk, babies should be given outside food supplements. May I know whether you are facing any cases as I said? No, nothing like that. I'm on maternity leave and I'm with my baby. But, nurse, I found my baby lost weight. And I'm very much concerned. Don't get upset, relax. Nothing to be alarmed about it, Mitchell. It is quite natural for newborn babies to lose weight. Is it? Why is it so? Yes, I can explain it to you. At first, babies are born with some extra fluid, so it's normal for them to drop a few ounces when they lose that fluid in the first few days of life. A healthy newborn is expected to lose 7% to 10% of the birth weight, but should regain that weight within the first three weeks or so after birth. Oh, all right. But is lactation enough for the baby? It is important to understand that your baby's weight gain is directly related to your breast milk supply. It means that as you breastfeed, your baby may not lose further weight. Rather, he'll eventually start gaining weight. Oh. I see. Nurse, when can I start giving solid foods to my baby? Mitchell, the best time to introduce solid foods is when your baby has developed the skills needed to eat. Doctors recommend that breastfeeding moms wait until their baby is six months old. Skills? What skills the six-month-old baby will have? By ages four months to six months, babies typically stop using their tongues to push food out of their mouths and begin to develop the coordination to move solid food from the front of the mouth to the back for swallowing. Oh, I see. To eat, babies need good head and neck control and should be able to sit up in a high chair. This usually doesn't happen until they're four to six months old. Also, if you try to feed your son solids before this age, you may notice that he pushes food out of his mouth as quickly as you put it in. Babies start to lose this natural tongue thrusting reflex at the 4 to 6 month mark, which makes it easier for them to start eating solid foods. It was a piece of new information for me. Thank you. My pleasure Mitchell. Wait until your baby is at least 4 months old and shows these signs of readiness before starting solids. Babies who start solid foods before four months are at a higher risk for obesity and other problems later on. They also aren't coordinated enough to safely swallow solid foods and may choke on the food or inhale it into their lungs. All right. Nurse, may I know about the age to start supplementary feeding? The most common reason parents give for starting supplementary feeding is that their baby still seems hungry straight after a feed. Supplementary feeding can create complications of its own as a result of offering milk from a source other than the breast. Okay. Can you fill me up with the diet pattern with the age for the baby? Sure, why not? As your baby grows and your milk supply amps up, your baby will be able to take in more milk in less time at one feeding. That's when you might start to notice a more predictable pattern. One to three months. Your baby will feed 7 to 9 times per 24 hours. 3 months, feedings take place 6 to 8 times in 24 hours. 6 months, your baby will feed around 6 times a day. The introduction of solids at about 6 months helps to fuel your baby's additional nutritional needs. 12 months, nursing may drop to about 4 times a day. I'm enlightened, nurse. Glad to hear that. Mitchell. Keep in mind that this pattern is just one example. Different babies have different paces and preferences, along with other factors that influence the frequency of feedings. I understand that. Is there anything else that I can help you with? No, you have enriched me with the information. I'm so thankful to you. My pleasure, Mitchell. Happy motherhood. I wish your baby all the goodness. Thank you. That is the end of your OHE speaking roleplay. All the best. Thank you. 
Thank you for watching. Please, like this video and encourage us. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Kindly comment your suggestions and help us do better.